Okay, coming at you, coming at you live from the war room, uh, deep in the heart of Lexington, in an underground cave. Now this is, uh, this is, what we're looking at here today is basically I'm just going to go over a few things real quick. Here's your workout, and we'll explain it. I want you to kind of see how we're going about it right here. So, um, we'll have four exercises here in the circuit for 20, 25 minutes. See, I'm not just lying. <laughs> I wrote that out there. Let me get a bigger view here. All right, so 20, 25 minutes, you'll go through these four exercises. And you'll keep going through them um, fairly continually. Now, um, as kind of we talked about, when it's less equipment and on your own, kind of err on the side of being winded as opposed to getting yourself fatigued or into a winded state through uh, load with, with the different weight selections we have at Fitness Plus. Without that kind of luxury, um, I would err on the side of more getting your fatigue through um, repetition and getting winded that way. So some of this stuff will kind of be more on the general side of things as far as like the intensity goes, but I think there's a few things here we can emphasize uh, while I've got the chance. So I thought we'd go eccentric leg curls, and we did some of this on Thursday, um, and we'll go over this in a little bit more detail. Tabletop row, or, um, I didn't write this down, but or banded rows. You got those bands, we can use those. Touchdown squats, that's a new one. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Push-ups, I feel pretty good about you doing push-ups from like a 17 or 18 and on up inch height. The thing is, is the nature of this circuit is you're going to get fatigued and you, and you know, try not to rest in between these. Um, no one set should knock you out of commission. You should be able to do any one of these exercise sets um, and then go on to the next one. And then over time, yeah, you'll probably find yourself being more in a fatigued state. Do take your breaks whenever you need to. But ideally, you want to run these fairly continually for 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll hit the core with a couple of moves, and then we're out, and we're enjoying the weekend. So once you go through these four, we'll have these two core exercises, and then you're good. Um, we didn't talk about warm-up, but, you know, just kind of get your chest, you know, your, sh your chest stretched there where you're opening up your pec with a, a doorway. You can use this right here, and I am twisting away from it twisting my torso away from it. This is all lax. I'm trying to stretch that pec muscle. And then you hit the other side too. And as a general rule of thumb, you want about 30 seconds on a stretch, on an isometric stretch. And then uh, moving on to the other uh, exercise. But, you know, if it's 30 seconds and you feel like you're just now starting to release that muscle, keep on, keep on stretching because it's kind of subjective. Yeah, the general rule is 30 seconds, but we accumulate tightness and tension different places, so you want to make this specific to you. You don't want to spend a lot of time on stretching any one body part, but you know, uh, people are made different, and so you got to account for that. All right, so uh, let's see some of this. A casa su casa. All right, so I want to start off with the eccentric leg curl. Now you did some of this on Thursday, with one exception. I want to show you one thing that I want to emphasize here. So you know how we talked about the concentric portion, the eccentric portion, the isometric portion of every rep. And as an example, I always use the bicep curl because it's easy to illustrate what I'm talking about. But in your typical bicep curl, where you're holding the barbell in front of you, and you curl up and you bring it back down. You're working that bicep muscle. In this instance, the concentric portion is the positive or the exhaustive portion, the one everybody focuses on, the positive portion. That's concentric. The eccentric is still under tension, but you're kind of moderating the descent. You know, gravity's working in your favor. You're kind of yielding to that so you just don't plop down, you know, really impact those joints. That's a no-go. So concentric, split second isometric, don't want to neglect that one. So there's your isometric, that you know, non-moving part, and then the eccentric. So 
in your bridge that we typically do, portions, the phases, would go as follows. Since we're working the hams and glutes here, This would be your concentric, and this would be your isometric, and this would be your eccentric. So I want to focus on the eccentric in an eventual move, and you were doing some of it on Thursday, the leg curl, which is an advanced move past the bridge on a Swiss ball. That has your legs straight out. You bring the hips up, you curl in. All right, now, this move here with the focus on the eccentric portion of the leg curl is going to borrow from the bridge that we used to do it and it's going to incorporate a new one that you kind of did on Thursday it's called the leg curl but it's so challenging and I don't want people to go on the wrong way on this one getting started off it's highly essential and imperative that your hips stay in the extension and don't go into flexion on this one because most people's hamstrings are real, real tight and they do a lot of work anyway. And we need to reintegrate the glutes to assist in the hamstrings with things like hip extension. So right here, we're going to do the bridge. All right, I want you to bridge up. That one you're familiar with. Now, I want you to, and I'm going to back up just a little bit. I want you to extend the knees, keeping the hips up off the ground. Now, reset, bring the hips down. Curl up the knees, and then you're going to start all over. Bridge, extend, hips go down, reset. Bridge, extend, hips go down, reset. That way, when you learn it that way, that way those hips are more prone to stay in the extension. And Really, I think hamstring tightness is a big contributor to low back pain. So we want to make sure that you're covered on those bases there. Knock out 10 of those. That's a new move. We don't have to go into too high repetition right there. In fact, eight is good right there. Um, if you've got any questions over that, just take that to a Swiss ball bridge and keep it at 10. All right, and then we're moving on to your row. I said the tabletop row. Let's go ahead and turn that into a banded row. You've got the bands, set them up. That kind of fits more with the general nature where we're kind of uh, airing on the side of, you know, getting winded as opposed to getting sore. Or, so here, you know, just attach your band to a height at about, you know, shoulder height is fine. Right here, I'd go probably right here. I'm doubling this one. This, this thing's going to move on me. So I'm just going to kind of sacrifice my range of motion here so that the thing doesn't move on me. But this is the exercise for your Breathing out, keeping distance between the arm and the shoulder, breathing out, leading with the elbow, keeping space right in here, you're not down like that, right there. Knock out 10 each side there, and then let's knock out what they call touchdown squats. Um, both the name and the position really belie what you're going for here. I get so many people thinking that they need to touch the ground. Don't be those people. The, the hands going down that and the elbows extended that's kind of like a bookend for your torso you don't want to you know get into that posture so this is going to help keep you up that's feedback there with the back of your arms into your lap you'll start off in a standing position and you're just going to jump and widen the stance it's not a very big jump you know keep the palms forward and you're back up all right now that looks like it might not be very challenging, but when you want to stance and go into that squat, um, talk to me later on that one. Uh, that one has a tendency to accumulate pretty quickly. Um, do 10 of those. 
15. Let's go 15 there. If you get fatigued, go 10. So we've got 10 bridges, or let's go ahead and call those Swiss ball eccentric leg curls. The focus on extending the knee while the hips are up. Once the knees are extended, hips go back down. Flex the knees, re-bridge, re-extend. 10 of those, 10 or 10 bridges. And then we're going to do 10 rows each side and then 10 to 15 touchdown squats. And then we're moving on to push-ups. And, you know, with a height like right there, we'll be fine. Pushing through mostly the heel of your palm. Distance between shoulders and ears, and you're breathing in and then breathing out. Okay. Knock out 10 of those, and there's no set number of circuits here. We're going for 20 minutes at the, at the least, at the minimum, 25 minutes at the most. Set a timer, um, keep an eye on the clock. Once your 20, 25 minutes is up, then we're going out to around the world. And these will be specifically three sets of 10, counting one revolution. So you remember these, you love these. We're here, and then we're raising left arm, right arm, left foot, right foot, that's one. We're in it for nine more times, racking up those frequent flyer miles with around the world at a clip of nine, or a 10 times total. <clears throat> Excuse me. From there, we're going to the uh, pallet press. And you would just find your band here. You position yourself 45 degrees, 90 degrees away from the uh, anchor point, and you would press out. So this is going to pull me right. You know, just imagine there's tension here. That thing's going to pop off. And I'm going to try to keep my grip through the midline of my chest. If it deviates inward, I need to kind of just centimeter myself back in. But trying to keep that midline there, again, it's not gonna look very indicative of the, of the exertion you might see because I'm trying to keep myself from getting slung shot in the head with a barbell. All right, Larry. Have a good one on this one. If you, have any, if you feel like you're going past Grandma's gate with any kind of janky thing might go through the uh, the body with doing any of these stop what you're doing you know take a walk uh, finish it out with a walk or something last thing we need to do is train into an injury so just kind of keep that governor in your head and you know don't go past stop so 20 25 minutes of your first four keep on going hey Chris I'm at 19 minutes I'm done with uh, the first the a, a circuit do I just keep on going back into the first one? Well, in that instance, let's say you've done, let's say you've done four circuits of the first four. We're talking about the row, the touchdown squats, the Swiss ball leg curl with the, with the eccentric focus, and the push-ups. Um, well, if you got enough time, I mean, if you got enough time to do a couple exercises, but not enough time to do a whole circuit, focus on the ones you're not very good at, and and take your time on them and try to find out what's hampering you and try to find a way around it. And let me know what you come up with. Um, get a break after the first four and then do your core exercises, three by 10, you know, on each pallet press. Pallet press, let's do 15 on each side. So well, on that exercise here, let's go 15 and then 15 on the other side. Always gotta hit both sides there. All right, I feel good about it if you do. Uh, this should uh, catch you early enough for Saturday morning. If not, the email postage person needs to be fired. Have a good one. I'll see you Tuesday.